You are really going to enjoy this interview with Michelle Olander. She talks about the practice of organizing, just like her vegan practice, a spiritual practice, maybe a yoga practice, but it's the practice of organizing and how she talks about it. Oh, I just love it. It feels so reassuring to me as I listen to it and think about different areas of my own life. Listen as she talks about how she brings baggage into organizing and coaching with me. And then also, you need to notice her push-up practice. (laughs) She talks about that. She mentions it later in the episode, but it's so good. So the reason I did this episode is for you to see what working with me one-on-one might be like. Why she chose to work and coach one-on-one with me versus joining Organized Coach Academy and how it's worked for her and the specific things that we've worked on. So I think it's always interesting to find out how people are running their business and what things they want to get organized and what that looks like in their mind. So you are going to really enjoy this episode. And in your mind, if you're thinking, I want to work with Tracy, I want the skills of organizing, I want to have a practice of organizing, I want someone to look at my business and say, this is what would be helpful. This is going to save you time. This system is going to change the way your business runs. Then reach out to me. All you have to do is make an appointment. You get to talk straight with me. We're going to jump on a call and talk about what it looks like, if it's right for you, if we're a good fit. So you can make an appointment at simplysquaredaway.com forward slash appointments. Simplysquaredaway.com forward slash appointments. And then If you're vegan, you're interested in becoming vegan, you want to learn more about that, find Michelle at Veg Your Best, that's the name of her podcast, or on Instagram at veg underscore your underscore best. Enjoy this episode. Are you ready to work less, feel more organized and productive, streamline repetitive tasks, and implement systems that allow your coaching business to run smoothly even without you? If so, you're in the right place. Welcome to the Organized Coach Podcast, your go-to source for practical tips and solutions. I'm your host, Tracy Hoth, professional organizer, certified life coach, simplifying expert, and most of all, down-to-earth fellow coach just like you. No matter if you think you're missing the organizing gene, have ADHD, or just love anything organizing, I'm here to help you become an organized coach with a business that works for you. Pull up a seat and let's get started. I've been looking forward to this conversation. Michelle, I'm so happy to have you here. Why don't we just start by you introducing yourself? Tell us what you do, who you help. Yeah, I'm Michelle Olander. I certified through the Life Coach School, which is how I know you through that really incredible institution. And I'm a a vegan coach. I wasn't sure that's what I was going to do from the beginning when I, I wanted to become a coach so I could learn more about coaching. But when I learned some of these tools, I really thought I could help women who went who would, are interested in going vegan in their midlife or later. I went vegan when I was in my 50s after being what I always call an excusitarian, which meant that I was <laughs> vegan unless there was an excuse. And so that's who I help. And I also end up, because of that, I end up helping other people who just kind of resonate, may not be fully vegan. I also help people who are fully vegan and are looking to do new things in terms of their work or their activism or their creativity. I love that. And I've loved getting to know you and getting to know your work and your approach to it was always so encouraging to me. It was like, people don't have to be perfect. You don't have to approach it in a perfect way or all or nothing kind of a way. Well, if perfect doesn't work for you, I hate to think that that's the only option, right? So, I mean, I like I like the idea of being perfect. In some areas of my life, I'm a lot more perfect than in other areas. But you don't get perfect without practice, without trying, you know? So I just think it's a a standard that a lot of us, a lot of us put out in front of ourselves, which is so self-defeating. It comes from a great place, right? It comes from a place where we want to do our best and show up and, you know, use what we know. But it's, 
it's just a, a recipe for being so unhappy or so judgmental about everyone around us because I think we can't we can't hold all that self judgment in ourselves. We have to start deflecting it. Oh, that's such a good point. I'm glad I said that because just hearing you say it, I don't know. It's like comforting but encouraging to me in just different areas that come up in my own life. Oh, that was good. Thank you. So are you telling me you're not perfect, Tracy? <laughs> no, I love can we ever even be? And it's just the practicing of our skill. Yeah. I mean, I think it's wonderful to be help to hold yourself in certain areas to a high standard. I think that's really important that we try to do, especially in areas where in my community, in terms of veganism, for a lot of people, that is something that's coming from a, a, a really a heartfelt place, from a, a, a feeling of morality, a feeling of ethics. Sometimes it's coming from a feeling of responsibility to our environment or many, many different reasons, our health, our family's mm -hmm. health. So there are a lot of reasons that go into it, which I think they're not just like, oh, whatever <laughs> kinds of feelings, yeah. you know, but how do we, how do we learn to take on new actions and they are actions. I, it's like veganism is not to me, it's not just a one and done ever. It's like so many other things that it's a practice. I always call it a vegan practice because you show up to it every day, like a, maybe like a spiritual practice or maybe like a yoga practice or mm -hmm. a meditation practice. It's something we keep coming up with and showing up with. And it's not always the same way. And kind of like an organizing practice. Well, <laughs> well, this is why I found you because, you know, we, we both went, were certified through the Life Coach School and there was a, on Facebook, there was a thread with different coaches talking about different things. And I can't remember whether you posted yourself anyway, I saw there was this woman who is an organization coach for life coaches. And I'm like, oh my Lord, hallelujah. That is the best niche. And I think that's what I wrote. That is the best niche I have ever heard of. <laughs> <laughs> One that many people might not know exists, you know, but they have problems and they need solutions and they want someone to coach them and walk them through the process. So what for you made you think I need that? I'm actually by nature, super disorganized. I like to think of that as a very beautiful quality, <laughs> but it means that I just have more interests and energy than I could possibly have systems to, to manage. But on the other hand, I find myself just surrounded by like half done things all the time, you know, that piles and tabs open on my computer and paper and not remembering if somebody says, you know, we also have a, a, a family business and we have some properties that we rent out. So we have a lot of little things that are always running in the background. So what made me think I needed it was I had so many half done I'm going to say systems. And it was, this is one of the funny things I remember about talking to you is I suddenly realized I said I needed systems when I came to you. And I started to realize I do have systems. Yeah, <laughs> we do. And that's and that is something I really learned about working with my clients. They're all they all have their their approaches, their ways. Some of the ways are making them frustrated. Yeah, well, that's been very fun. I think it's so interesting how it shows up as we've worked together, how you're like, oh yeah, that's how my clients, that's what they're going through. Oh, this relates perfectly to what they're going through. We all have systems. It's just, are they as efficient? Are they running as smoothly as we want them to? Yeah. And my systems are very often, you know, running out of time, last minute, the frenzy that just suddenly everything has that has to be done. The priority list gets very clear when you've completely run out of time. That's one of my systems. <laughs> <laughs> Last minute deadlines. Yeah. Yeah. That kind of just uh, the adrenaline system. As a coach, I don't work with a huge number of clients. So it's one of, and that's on purpose. That's because I have a, a life and other obligations in my life that I don't want to give up. So I wouldn't say that I'm a part-time coach because it really is overwhelmingly what I do. My podcast and my content, and my website, it's all aimed at, at, at being a coach. 
for, especially for people, midlife women who want to move in a vegan direction. So that is full time in my energy and brain, but I still have a lot of other things that I'm doing time wise. So I thought that, oh, I didn't really need to set up some of these systems quite the same way, but, but, <laughs> but. I was, I'm kind of amazed as we work together, just how diligent you are with each individual system. I mean, first you came knowing, well, that you wanted systems. And what's so interesting, even listening to you now talk, is that organization in your definition is having systems. Mm -hmm. That means that you're organized or that implies that to you. Even the other day when we talked, it was like, I'm feeling disorganized because my systems aren't working. And we all have different definitions of what being organized is and what it looks like in our own life, which is, it's fine that we all have these different definitions. So when you came, what, was there something that stood out you wanted to work on first? I, I can't remember what it was exactly, but what we did work on first was your very simple idea of organizing your desktop. Because my computer I, I didn't even know how to begin <laughs> with it. <laughs> I, I I would spend so much time looking for things or thinking I know things are there. I used Evernote and I used my email and I used Google Drive and I used, what else did I use? I used a bunch of other things and I'd have to remember, oh, did I save that on Evernote or was that, did, is that still in my email or did I, anyway. I had systems, but I didn't have the kind of systems that were quick to retrieve. So mm -hmm. when you when you help me, just first of all, everything on my desktop, is it personal or is it my business? So that was like. <laughs> <laughs> it's those little things, right? <laughs> oh, well, and, and that's it. You know, and this is where coaching, why I'm with you is you are a coach. You really are a coach. You also are an organizational expert, but you are a coach. And I think coaching is the most effective way of making making change. It really has been amazing for me in other areas too. But in this area, I can see how the thought I have, no, that won't be enough. No, you don't get it. My stuff is everywhere. Mm -hmm. Those, 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 the self-talk, the narrative I have about it is so unhelpful. And all it takes is a friendly face going, really? <laughs> <laughs> I remember you said, I never remember anything. I can't read digitally. I like paper. Like there was all these things that you had said. And you also said that you've received processes like tips or templates that I've given you or taught you a skill, but that Helping you reframe how you think about it is what you're saying. Like that reframing how you're thinking about it not only gives you the practical impact, but gives you the lasting change impact. Exactly, exactly right. Because you you can, if I hired you just simply as an organizational expert, you would maybe set up my paperwork or you'd give me a template or whatever. But the approach of me, when I sit there sometimes and go, catch myself saying, this is impossible. This is, this is not for me. I've never been good at this. That's when I, I remember, okay, all right, all right. I actually can do it. Where could I start? Is it personal or is it business? Yes. <laughs> what kind of a file is it? Do I want to keep it? Do I, so it, it just is an area where I know that I bring a lot of baggage. I would call it like Marley's ghost, just dragging all these like chains of, of feelings about this is too hard for me. I'm just not good at it. Mm -hmm. And I also, I work mostly with midlife women. I'm turning 65 this year. And it's, it's an area where I think women often will think, oh, technology, oh, the computer, oh, these new skills. I just don't have it. It's too late for me. And I, that's not my story there, but I notice when I'm doing these side, what, sideways stories of like, oh, I'm no good at that. That's never been me. It's all nonsense. It's just a story we're all making up all the time. Yep. That we've repeated enough that we believe it. Mm -hmm. Feels super true. And then, of course, I look at my desktop sometimes, you know, and I go, oh, wow, this is my default. I'm like this. And I'm like, what, what am I telling myself that story? I can just go slide them over into personal 
business, open up business. Now I've got my education. I've got a client. I have my different categories, super simple. Mm-hmm. And if people, if people haven't started with your, your free, cl- you have some classes about that. Mm-hmm. That's where they should absolutely start. If they, if they haven't worked with you, they should definitely start with those things. Yes. It makes all the difference. And I do love too, that you said your mind says, if you see your desktop and it's messy that, Oh, here, this is who I am. Like I don't do this. You have to catch yourself. But my desktop can be messy. And my thought is, oh, man, I need to get that cleaned up. Like never once does it define if I'm organized. It just shows how we all have these stories that we tell about ourselves. It's absolutely true. And in terms of like working with my clients, sometimes if somebody's new to veganism, they're, they'll some of the areas where they'll be like, OK, I could be vegan at home. There's no way I could be vegan at my mother-in-law's house, or there's no way I can be vegan when I'm traveling or on business. And that's really true when when they're telling themselves that because they are remembering all the times it was difficult to explain themselves, or they had an awkward moment with a waiter, or their mother-in-law just like rolled you know, roughshod over their personal requests. And so it is, it's the exact same thing. So unless we're willing to just go, okay, well, maybe that's the area where it won't look great this week. Maybe that's the area, but we could also try. We could try just sliding over into, yeah, I'm not going to eat that this week. Maybe I'll, I'll bring what I, what I packed at home to my mother-in-law's house. You know, we have different things we can do, but they seem impossible until we start. Questioning those things too, having something kinder, something more curious to look at. Like maybe it is, maybe it is just that I've been in a rush and I've downloaded a bunch of files to my desktop. Maybe I do just need to slide them into place. Yeah. And, and start there. And, you know, I, I know that I, I love the information in courses. You have organized coach Academy, which I actually do go through, but I work with you one-on-one because I just feel it is a, a perfect way for me to keep up to date on that. If it if I had to remind myself to to log in all the time, I could do it. I mean, I theoretically could do it. I physically could put it on my phone or somewhere because I do do other things <laughs> that I get get <laughs> accomplished. But something like that, which might feel a little bit like, oh yeah, I know I need to move my clean up my desk my desktop, or oh yeah, I know I need to look at my Google Drive and see if I have my standard operating procedures <laughs> written up. I okay, I know I should do that, but having you once a week to uh, talk to and help me see it's really no big deal. Because when if I have to do it on my own, I'm gonna inflate it into something much more illustrative of where I've where I'm broken. <laughs> well, that's one of the things too that I've noticed. Yeah, not broken, but <laughs> that's one of the ways things I've noticed that's I think has been helpful. And you'll have to affirm or correct me on this, but is with your writing. Like when you you're writing a book. And I remember when when we first started, you were kind of in this spot where you were stuck, maybe like you weren't getting accomplished. The I think it was the literary review. Yeah. And I think working together, you'll just bring that. OK, I need a process. I love how you're always saying I need a system for this. <laughs> so we yeah, talk my- through <laughs> we create your system. But t- tell us about that. Well, you know, what I do notice is things that I have a lot of. Things like so writing for me, this has this carries a lot more emotional baggage for me than a lot of the other things I need to do. So that's the area I'm still kind of stuck with. I have been creating more systems and making making the rules a little bit easier for me to win. You know, I've talked to you about how I have a, a practice of doing one push up. And I love as long it. as I as long as I do one push up, I'm a winner. I love myself. I think I'm the best. I'm get and some and very often I do way more than one push up now that I actually can do push ups, but I always do one push up. Sometimes, usually twice a day, I do one push up, and as long as I do that, I'm in complete compliance. I've met my goal in that area, and that's because I know I want to get stronger, but I don't have a lot of like fraught feelings about my upper body strength, <laughs> you know? But with writing, I'm like, oh, there, it seems like such a big process and I'm going to be judged on it and I'm going to judge myself on it and who knows how it'll turn out and where it will look like. And so that 
that goal of finishing a first full draft has been something that that we're still working on together Tracy we're not we're not done yet but it is the whole thing is to make it in smaller more bite-sized pieces where I'm always winning day to day like no zero days all the days work yeah well and it's so fun I keep track of people's you know what their goals are what they thoughts that they had or didn't have and accomplishments and stuff like that. And it's so fun looking back, like you had your literary re- review done by the third week. Like no. you were acted like you, maybe you weren't, but you <laughs> seemed like you're really stuck. We created how you were going to do it. And then the third week you had it done. Yeah. I'm just like, oh yeah, yeah I got that done. And, and it is done. I mean, that is one of those one of the reasons why not one-on-one coaching can be a little bit different, I think, than being part of a, a big group, mm-hmm. or, because you can really talk about only something that's only interesting to you, or you think is only interesting to you, and stay really focused on that sort of project, which really, if it's not going well, that means there's stuff to be unpacked. That's the way it, it seems to me. Anything that you're stuck on, it's we're stuck on one part of it, but there's there's little stuff in there that needs to be unpacked and needs just a little bit more time. And I need a little more time from you. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So I like how you're pointing out the difference between joining like Organized Coach Academy or joining or getting a one-on-one coach. And you just, it's a little bit different. You have different things that you're wanting, but you may cover some of the same things, but it's that it's the coaching, individual. really. Yeah. It's really the individual coaching because it is the difference between, you know, knowing and doing. I kind of know what to do. I do know I'm supposed to sit down and write, right? <laughs> I do know that part. <laughs> My clients know they're supposed to, if they say they want to be vegan, they they really know how that looks. It just somewhere in there in terms of the interpersonal relationships and asking for what they want and, you know, being organized ahead of time to make sure that they have vegan choices in their world uh, to, to eat or to use or to wear. These things, they're, they're muscles that they haven't fully developed. And just telling them what to do isn't really what they need. Right. There are people, there are people who can just do it overnight. There are people who go, Oh, really? What is it she says I should do with my files? Okay, Tracy. So I'm going to do that. That what's the naming convention? Okay. We're going to put the date and then <laughs> done. Uh, <laughs> it's all done. <laughs> right. Well, let's talk about. So I know people are out there listening and maybe they're like, I don't know. Do I need her? I really need to, I don't know, make more money in my business or I need to get more clients or whatever. Do I really need this? So let's talk about some of the things that we've worked on. I know we started with digital files. So you have your files organized. And I think it was interesting just, I don't know, a week or two ago, you said, I've kept up with that. And I did note that you said halfway through our first session that we worked together, you said, I notice I don't have feeling of dread when I go to my Google Drive. Yeah. (laughs) I'm like, that's a goal. Like what? In six weeks, you have no dread now when you go to your Google Drive. Yeah. And, you know, partially it's just going to my Google Drive. <laughs> you <laughs> go and that, nobody dies. You know, I open it up and even if things aren't in the right place, just it's just like when you when you opening the mail, if, if some people let the mail p- pile up, pile oh, up, yeah. pile up and just opening it. You go, okay, well, that's, it's fine. I, I, I'm, I'm okay. So just revisiting going to Google Drive every, because, you know, to me, it doesn't look as nice as some, I don't love the way Google Drive looks. Mm-hmm. Now I'm over it. it. It works very, very well. It's got a lot of, uh, it's, it's, there's, it doesn't have to look nice. I, I can just meet it for what it is, which is really very versatile and very powerful. I'm remembering when I told you I don't like reading a lot of things digitally, so I would end up printing everything out, and I felt like I couldn't I couldn't organize things unless they were printed out. Well, of course, that's just untenable, <laughs> right? Impossible. Yeah, but until you have something, and even in my Coach Academy today on our call, we just were talking about, and I was screen sharing and showing them little tricks in Google Drive to make it look better and how to create a document that's already within a folder that you need, just different little things like that, that I think so helpful because every software program or 
anything we join for the first time always seems overwhelming, but the more, and I think some people are just a little bit, I don't know if embarrassed is the right word, shy about telling anybody that they think that so, or that they don't know that, or they have a right. question they think is weird or something or to and, beginner. And, also, and there's, there's so much to learn. Even Google drive, there's so many, you know, you, 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 you do your, your workshops on the bookmark <laughs> <laughs> bookmark bar. I mean, there's so many things that can be learned. And and I think or, Organized Coach Academy could be overwhelming for someone like myself to do that, to even approach that on her own, because there's a lot that you, you would just say to me, we don't really need to, to do that right now. <laughs> we can work on something else. So the information is there. And people, I think, I think, I think it's amazing what you've put together for everybody. Really, really amazing. But I, I love working on working on all this one on one with you. This is yeah. my sec- second go round, I think. I, I think know. we're move, moving moving towards the end of the second one. I know. So we worked on sis- then we after digital organization, we then worked on I think it was your calendar, calendaring, time blocking. There was some podcast deadline that was causing you that, that was really that was really helpful because it's it hasn't stayed the way it was because so I have a weekly podcast, Veg Your Best, and I have a sound guy and I have a virtual assistant, Nancy, who's, so these, that's my small team, team. where, where mm-hmm. nobody, nobody's full time except me, basically. But uh, it's my small team. And you helped me so much. Just look at my calendar a little bit more objectively. What actually needs to be done when and work backwards? Now, I know that doesn't sound like rock science. But when you're thinking, when you're in the middle of it, you're thinking, oh no, but then that happens. And maybe I have this whole story. So mm-hmm. it was very, very helpful for me to begin with. I think we, we put together an ideal week. Like what would be in a perfect world? When would you have enough time to do it? When could you do it? And when, and would everybody get what they need you know, mm-hmm. for editing and that sort of thing. And that was super helpful. And what was really fun for me was realizing periodically it didn't work and that was okay. We slide the thing over. Now that I know what I need to do, I can either move it backwards or move it forwards, or I can easily see what I need to call or text my my assistant about and say, well, that's not going to happen today. What should we do? I can tell I can ask my sound guy, will you still have time to uh, edit it or do we need to do something else this week? So it was just such an opportunity for me to really focus on what I wanted the week to look like rather than what seemed like it had to look like. Mm -hmm. And I remember having the deadline for you to turn the podcast in, even maybe before your your guy needed it kept the mind drama out of your head because there was a lot of mind things that would go on or take up time until you had that turned in. Yeah. And I always before until I hit until I'm done with my podcast, I always think, oh, I could add something in there or do something a little different, or maybe I should include somebody else's thing, or maybe maybe I'll just wait. So this just gave me my own personal permission to say, well, we we don't do that anymore as of a certain time, which it's changed a couple of times based on different people's schedules and vacations. But it's just so much, you know, sometimes I think people like myself don't feel like we have the authority to just decide. We need to think what everybody else needs. And sometimes we're not that comfortable to just say, no, I'm going to do it this way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and if it doesn't work that well, that's okay. I think that's the thing. It's like, well, what if it doesn't work? I was like, well, what if, what if it doesn't? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll fix it. Then we'll try so something. It won't work. Different. Yeah, we've developed a process for your podcast. Yep, kind of. You've yep. shared that with both of your team members. That's exactly right. Shared with shared with them. So, and they were able to say that's, um, you know, that's too optimistic, or no, that's great. In my situation, I think probably with many of your coaches that you, that you coach, we are the we're the leader for the team. So if we have any kind of help at all, any kind of team at all, they're waiting to hear from us what's really important, what what makes our lives simpler, or what's making that result happen that that we like. 
it was an opportunity to just sit there and not just respond all the time, but to actually plan something. Yeah. And lead like an organized CEO. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And then we also made your podcast catalog. And did you do a guest form? Do you have a guest form? Yes, I have a guest form, but that's attached to Calendly, my calendar. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. My calendar. Yep. That that worked well. And and all of these things, it was just also because you do, you're all, you're a coach that has a podcast. So you are also able to show me what works really well with your podcast. And then sometimes you say, well, I'm still, the, the, the jury's still out on that. So let's not talk about <laughs> that, what I'm doing right now. So I think that that's so, that's just a, a great opportunity for me, be, me to be able to pick your brain on all yeah. these subjects. Well, and having the form, I just think that's so helpful for a a guest to fill a form out. So they, you have everything you need. You're not spending time. So it's saving you time because you're not emailing back and forth. And you have a catalog now that has all your episodes in it. And once we have that, then we can put into our team's job description or in the standard operating procedure that they fill in something if we need them to, if we haven't filled it out or whatever. That's right. Like this, this week I have um, a bunch of people have uh, booked themselves into my calendar for uh, the podcast. And I just, I get the notification from Calendly and I just have now started forward, forwarding it to my assistant and she updates it into the guest episodes of document that we made this kind of spreadsheet that, what do you call that? It's a, it's not a doc. Google sheet. Google sheet. The Uh Google sheet. And, and so in that we have the information, the link to, to their websites, to their social media, whether we've recorded it yet, whether it's booked for a recording or whether it's all done and it's in the, you know, it's in the can, all that, sometimes some keywords are in there for topics because I have now over 175 uh, consecutive weekly episodes. And for a while, I was able to keep all that in my head. So I didn't really see that that was so important. And now there are people I I see it on my list and I go, I don't remember them. (laughs) I don't remember what we talked about. And I have to like really, I click on the link and and remind myself who they are and what they created. And, you know, depending on when we recorded that, that podcast, I may have had had something else going on in my life that that just superseded the memory. I don't know. Well, but 175. So yeah, I don't think we should be able to remember everyone. But one thing, thinking of that, that I learned from you is you had had a spreadsheet or something where your guests and if you had reached out to them and if they've scheduled and all that. So I added that sheet tab at the bottom of my Google sheet. So I have my podcast catalog. I have a sheet of guests that I'm reaching out to or that have reached out to me. And then I have the form that they fill out that feeds into that. So all of it's in one place. I mean, that's our goal to make it as simple as possible, even though, and you can attest to, even though the sound of that initially seems overwhelming. Yeah. Yeah. Once you get the setup, then it really makes our life easier and run. It really does. Because sometimes, you know, people will say, You reach out to them and they say, oh, I absolutely want to be on, but my book is coming out in, I don't know, four months. So can we book it when we, when we, when I have a publication date or something like that? And so, yeah, you can, and I can put it on my calendar, but it's so much nicer if I can even, I just have my assistant take a look at the document and say, oh, let's circle back to these people. Maybe it's time to, to Mm. talk to them. Or I'm thinking about doing a a best of guests type of like information I learned from my guests. Such the document is going to be the perfect thing to go through and and do a first run. Like, okay, which ones do I want to listen to first, Mm -hmm. re-listen to and edit, you know, edit something out of. There are so many things from each of these sheets because, I mean, that's the brilliance of digital is everything can be hyperlinked. It's just... Why not take advantage of that? And it does sound like a lot. And many times you've explained things to me, especially the bookmark bar. bar, And you just saw my eyes just go dead. (laughs) I remember the podcast catalog the first time. You're like, well, let's wait on that. (laughs) (laughs) But you've also used, I guess, my skills or you've brought to coaching, doing this in your home, like in other areas of your life besides just in your business. 
Yeah. Yeah. Because there is everything bleeds into each other, you know, and when you have a little bit more bandwidth, it can be used everywhere. It's not, you know, it, it doesn't, it can't, doesn't have to only be with my, my clients or, or with my podcast. So yeah, we, I, I've used it a lot with, I, th- <laughs> I'm trying to think about what to talk about with that because I do use it everywhere. I'm trying to get ready to downsize a house, the house that my kids grew up in. And that, you know, it's 25 or 30 years, maybe not quite 30 years of stuff. And so part of me says, oh, we have to just, that has to be a, a project that gets done in a certain way. And since there is no time, the house isn't for sale or anything yet, and probably won't be for a little while. I just have that on my kind of flow chart of my day to just double check. What, what could I clean out? What check with the kids? I have like lists of checking with the kids. Do you want any of these things? And it's okay if you don't want to decide right now, but I've kind of begun that whole process. And that's part of like my best practices would be that these things get moved through. So it's not a yeah. decision that I have to make all at once if suddenly we decide we want to sell the house. Same thing with uh, 65 is when you have to declare yourself to the government about Medicare. And that's another one of these things. I have a couple things that I feel like I need to organize and in research about my, my insurance, my health insurance, mm-hmm. my doctors, will my doctor take, you know, that that kind of insurance when I go to Medicare? These are things that are, you know, I feel like I don't, I feel like I'm not ready for some of them. But as long as you have the information and you have a place to keep it, and now I, I am feeling more confident keeping all this information. Mm-hmm. Well, and I know you said something about you made something for your husband on Google Keep and your some other time your kids were proud of you by something you made. Oh, yeah. So for, like when we we travel a fair travel, amount. Travel, yes. Yes. And and yes. And so he he it was like magic that when you do it in Google <laughs> Keep, it automatically updates on the other okay. person's. Yeah. And so it, it, the shared document. And I guess, you know, if you're if you're young and you know how this works, <laughs> maybe. Maybe you're thinking she's just no. You know. There is always things that even tech. Be, I but I am proud to say that my daughters have taught me a lot about all tech stuff. Oh, and my sons too. But they're at home right now. But the other day, I taught them something, and they're like, "Oh, I didn't know it could do that." And I was like, "Yes, I taught you that. Can you please remember?" <laughs> Your yes, mother. and I did teach my kids something with that list, but I can't remember which list it was. It must have been for a travel or a holiday or something. It, I'm, I'm blanking on that right now. But yeah, it is. It's like a miracle when you when you know that you keep everything in one place. That was a big, uh, big change. Yes. And that was one of the first things that we worked on was everything. I have things that are in other places, but all new stuff goes into Google. Mm-hmm. Google. Yeah. So I, and, yeah. And I didn't, and, and you said I don't have to like move everything and rename everything. That's fine. It's just all the new stuff goes in one place. So mm-hmm. it just relieves your mind. You don't then have to be thinking of all of that. I think I have down, it was digital files were organized and your kids were impressed. I don't know. <laughs> that was like the third week we worked together. So. <laughs> yeah, and I can't remember what I showed them, but yeah, it. Oh, you know, it probably was my screen, sh- my screenshot of my my desktop. Oh, yeah, that's what it was. And they were like, "No, that's not Michelle. That's not mom." <laughs> <laughs> the other thing that stood out is when the peace that you got, the feeling of peace from your bills, like checking on bills. I don't know. Was it just bills? Yeah. You, well, you suggested, so we have a couple income properties like and rental properties. And then we have our other things that people send bills all the time in the, in the email. And that's something I've said to myself all the time. Well, I, I just have to stop everything and pay them all the time because my email just gets so full and I'm going to lose everything. And if I, you know, suddenly somebody will be saying, well, did you pay it? And I'm like, I don't know. (laughs) I said, what I wanted was to know, to trust myself, to know that if the bill came, I would know where it was and only pay bills maybe once a week or, you know, not like on a daily, whenever they come, sometimes multiple times a day basis. Mm -hmm. And so you had said, if you put an underscore in 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 front of the name, in, Uh in front of the name. And so that will keep it always at the top of the list. 
of um, an email, email folder, mm-hmm. email folder. So there's that folder. And so when they come through, I can just, oh, I could just slide it into that folder. And I was really nervous that I would slide it into the folder and never look at that folder again. But at first I looked at it every day and now it's basically once a week that I look right. and, and double check. And so it's, I'd love it if it was, you know, the 15th and the 30th of every month, that would be like perfection. But I think that right now, yeah. once a week is super great, super great. Right. And around Christmas, there were so many things coming, coming in. And my, I've never seen my, in, my, my mail so full with all kinds of things that it would definitely have gotten lost if I didn't mm-hmm. have a place for all those bills to go. Yeah. And it's just customizing a system that works for you, setting up calendar reminders to to make sure in the process of doing it that you're not forgetting and then tweaking it as you go. So yeah, so many different things. It's been fun to talk through what we've worked on and And six months, right? Is that that how long it's been? I don't even know. If it's been six, yeah, maybe almost six months. June or July, mm-hmm. I feel like. I'm mm-hmm. not quite- yeah. So there's people out there. They're like, I don't know. Should I invest in an organizing coach? Do I need this? Like, what can she really help me with? Or should I just join the course? What are some thoughts you have or what would you recommend or say to them? I would say if you know yourself to be someone who is very good at doing those digital kinds of classes and courses and 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 taking part because I think I think with Organized Coach Academy you'd want to make sure that you show up for some of those the group the group sessions and the coaching sessions and so you can share I think if you know that you'll put those on your calendar and do a lot of them I think that might be might be great that might the information's all in there as far as I can see. But if you're someone that really needs a little bit of handholding and somebody to, and honestly, you, you custom help me with my questions. I don't have to figure it out from what the information you have, you have in your documents. You just, you just tell me, (laughs) you just tell me. And that's like, I think that's amazing. For me, I'm, I'm not going back anytime soon. I'm, I'm staying, I'm sticking around with you for a while. Yes. Yeah. You're so fun to work with. It's been, it's been a real joy and it's fun to get to know like your business in your life and then figure out solutions to help it run more smoothly or in your mind to be organized, to have these systems in place. Yeah. And also you're, I mean, this is not my strong area, whether that's a thought or not. It's it's the area where I have struggled, felt struggle. And so as a coach, I'm meeting people in the area typically where they're feeling some struggle. Mm-hmm. And so it is a nice opportunity for me to to relate to them. When when I'm feeling that struggle, I'm thinking, oh yeah, this is really what my client is is feeling, even if it's a different subject. This is what she's feeling. She knows mm-hmm. what she wants and it's not coming through in in what she's putting together. So for me, it's just a really important part of my continuing getting better as a coach. Yeah, I love it. Well, thank you so much for being on and being vulnerable enough to share what you say you're not strong in, (laughs) your weaker area in front of everyone. And so many people are going to be able to relate to that and see, oh yeah, that's how I feel too. And Well, I was nervous to come on because I was thinking, don't you want me to be at an after level? So I'm still at I'm still, I think, a before. (laughs) No, you are definitely after. I mean, the way you implement and perfect these systems and you keep checking in and checking back with the ones that we've set up and it's just been fun to watch your growth. So I really appreciate you being here. Thank you, Trip. I see. I appreciate you. Wait, if you're finding this podcast useful, you must check out the Organized Coach Academy. It's my course where I walk you through every step to get your business organized, to get yourself organized, to save money and time, to prepare to hire someone, to do all the things that you want to do in your business with ease. Check that out at simplysquaredaway.com forward slash OCA. Also, I'm sure you've heard this a million times, but 
I would love it. It's my way of knowing that you're enjoying the podcast if you leave a written review. I have lots of freebies for you. They're linked in the show notes. You can find them in my bio on Instagram at Tracy Hoth. And until next week, have a beautiful day. Thank you.